hey bunny welcome back to my youtube channel or welcome if it is your first time here my name is honey and i post fun authentic and most importantly educative videos so if you're not subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you get notified every single time i post a new video so today's video is one video that i have been sitting on for the longest not even a video it's a series i've been sitting on this series for the longest if you follow me on instagram if you don't please do here's my instagram but if you follow me on instagram then you know that i posted on instagram i don't know maybe in january or so whether you guys wanted me to do true crime stories that are namibian based or basically just um the, what i've been doing earlier which is the mystery marriage mondays and most of you guys voted for true crime stories that are namibian inspired so this is our first video which i've been so busy guys i've been planning to do this video for the longest but i just never got to it because of how busy i was but um i finally got a chance to sit down and do this video i will link all of my references <laughs> okay you are being too academic honey but um i'll link all of my sources yes down below and if i miss um, anything or if i say something and you feel like that's not how it is please feel free to correct me obviously um don't be mean i'll be doing my makeup while i'm doing it while i'm telling the stories so if you want to know anything about the makeup products that i'm using leave a comment in the comment section below and i will respond to you and um, this is one of those stories that i just i don't know i don't know it just bothers me it's just not to say it bothers me but it haunts me i don't know if that is the right term but i just feel like the story is now long overdue still there's no arrest for this person and it sucks and i feel like it's dying um nobody is talking about it anymore so then the story is just dying and nothing is really happening to the story so i wanted to share the story with you guys and you know let's just spread the word and let's not forget about this particular person and i would like to make a disclaimer as well and the disclaimer is that this video might not be for everyone so if you feel like this video is not for you please feel free to watch another video you don't have to watch this video if you feel like it's too much for you i would also have to say that this video is going to contain some graphic details so please if that is of any disturbance to you please just feel free to click out of the video or skip through the part um, i'll leave timestamps so that you know which parts to skip through when it gets to that point but yeah so let's get into this video shot today's video so for today's story we are talking about the case of Shirley Avihe Uyaha um, if you know me if you watch enough of my videos then you will know that the CH pronunciation just yeah so I'll be referring to her as Avihe for the rest of the video just because I'm more comfortable with that pronunciation although she went with she went by Shirley um, Avihe for me is just the most uh, I don't know it's the most comfortable it's the easiest to say of the names so yeah that's how i'll be referring to her so avihe was born on the 29th of january 2009 and she was only nine years old when this incident happened and she was a student at well <laughs> i don't know if i'm supposed to say a student but she went to gamam's primary school which is a school in komasta avihe was described as talkative smart God fearing, loving, chic, and very strong willed. Um, Abihe was one of those kids that would always get diplomas in school. Matter of fact, she even got a diploma 
you know after the whole incident and she was now buried and everything like she you actually got a diploma for being like the what is that word she's for for the best for being the best learner in her class at the time and she was a grade three learner so yeah she's really described to be a very smart and smart girl Avijay was basically described as those, you know, those cute girls, you know, those adorable girls that we all want to play with. I don't know, when I list, when I read uh, about how they described Avijay as, it just reminds me of, you know, those small little girls that are just, you know, always talking and it's just fun to be around them because they are always asking questions because they are always, I don't know, because they just come off so smart and adorable. You know, that's the type of three year old not three year old but grade three child that Avihe was described as and I don't know that just when I read the descriptions of how everybody described her is that's just what I think of that's what I'm picturing in my mind you know of who this girl really was. Avihe's father lived in the UK and as you know, you, the UK is far, so you, pretty, you you would think that she didn't have a relationship with her father simply because of how far the UK is. There, but um, the distance really never got between her relationship with her father. They would always keep in touch. They would always talk over the phone. And Abihe was actually supposed to go, not visit, but like to move to the UK to live with her father in the UK. Um, eventually she was supposed to move to the UK to go live with her father so um, they had um, a pretty close relationship re um, even though they didn't live in the same country um, yeah they kept in touch and they would always talk on the phone um, in fact the last phone call that Adi had with her father was basically about how excited she was to go live in the uk with the father and how she had just gotten back her school report and she had done pretty well you know in school so um it is said that they had a really great relationship with her father Adiha lived with her mother in clemens kapua street in katutura next to her mall and they had a very close relationship i mean they even shared a bed like they slept in the same bed on saturday the 25th of august before they went to bed that saturday night Adiha's mom came home and brought her a handbaker for dinner you know i know like this is so special and i'm actually mentioning this i uh, know i'm mentioning this under the the, the, the part where I'm talking about her relationship with her mother simply just because we all know like your mother ain't buying you a handbag on a Saturday like you know it doesn't happen every day that your mother buys you a handbag like it happens like once in a while that your mother will buy you a bag but it's not like an, an everyday thing which is why I am mentioning it right now but um yeah she bought Avehe a beggar which um, Avehe ate before she went to bed. On the 28th of August Sunday 2018 um, Avehe and her mother normally had the routine where they would stay in bed a little bit longer on Sundays before they would you know get out of bed and do whatever it is they had to do for the day but that day Avehe just she didn't want to be in bed she just wanted to go out and play with the other kids so Avehe actually woke up early this day and decided to go play with the other kids in the street her mother tried to get her to get out of her pajamas before she left but she didn't want to she just wanted to go and play in her pajamas so her mother basically just let her go to go play and after an hour or so she called her back to come change and take a bath so while Avehe went in the shower taking a bath um the mother was preparing food and doing laundry so Avehe's mother cooked food and sold food for a living that was her job she was like cooking food and then selling to people and so on that particular day she was preparing food for some of her customers that she had to deliver um, around lunchtime and one of the customers that uh, Abihe's mother you know um, one of one of Abihe's mother's customers was basically Abihe's aunt who was also Abihe's school principal um, I just want you to remember this part of the story because um, you will understand later on but don't forget about this mention here of how Abihe's mother mentioned that she was doing laundry 
and cooking food that she had to go deliver and you know um Abby has mother sister but Sepa who's also her school principal was also one of the customers that she had to deliver this food to cool now Avihe comes I don't know if I was referring to her as Avihe or Avihe guys I don't, I don't know why I keep messing up the name like that it's not on purpose my apologies I'm so sorry but the name is Avihe not Avihe if I did say Avihe earlier at around 11 o'clock ish 12 o'clock ish Avihe's mother was now ready to go deliver the food that she had just prepared for her customers and so she was leaving the house when she say goodbye to Avihe so um Avihe was done getting dressed and she was wearing a striped jumpsuit with uh, slippers and a bracelet so basically um she left the house said goodbye to Avihe not knowing that this was the last time she would ever see her daughter alive again and yeah so she left and went to go deliver her customers put at around three o'clock Avihe's mother returned home and she came there was no one at home so she decided to just rest a bit before she decided to go look for Avihe. Um, when I heard the part where like the, the mother had to rest a bit I like for me that came off as if okay maybe you know it's something that she does all the time like as in Sometimes when she goes out, you know, and leaves Avihe alone at home, or in this case, it seemed as if Avihe was just left alone at home. This is normal. This is very normal. It happens a lot in, I've seen in neighborhoods where you guys have that kind of close-knit relationship where the kids just go out and go play with the neighbor's kid. And it's not a big deal because you know that, you know, they are safe. That's that's normal it's pretty normal it happens all the time i know i grew up in a neighborhood where we grew up like that although my mom was strict and she always wanted us home she didn't want us to go out and go to the neighbor's house as much i know that in some in some in some neighborhoods this is pretty common that the kids can just you know go play with the other kids while the mother is out or so so i'm guessing this was the situation the mother just assumed that the child was gonna play or i don't know that's just my guess so it was okay for her to just you know like let me just breathe a bit sit down rest a bit and then go look for avihe she then went to the neighbors to go look for avihe and they were all like no we did not see her However, one of the neighbors did mention that um, Avihe did come by earlier to come look for her friend that they would normally play together. But that friend wasn't at home and she was visiting her, visiting her aunt. So um, Avihe left. Um, she also mentioned that she did some for a brief moment see Avihe playing with her other kids. But then um, she did not see how Avihe left the house or anything like that so she goes back home she didn't find her obviously so she goes back home and she starts calling her relatives you know looking to see if one of them had picked up Avihe um, she called the aunt the aunt does mention that you know she had been looking for Avihe earlier as well not Avihe sorry she had been looking for Avihe's mother earlier as well because she was wondering if Avihe's mother had prepared her food and if she should if she would if she can come pick up her food when she came back from church but Avihe answered the phone and when she answered the phone which means at this time Avihe was still you know at home so um when she when Avihe answered the phone she answered the phone saying that her mother was not at home and her mother did not prepare the food now I don't know if you guys see this or not, but for me, this is just like, who's lying? Like, is Avihe lying? Like, did Avihe lie and say that her mother did not prepare the food? If the mother just said that she went out to go deliver food that people have ordered, or is the aunt lying when she's saying that she called Avihe and Avihe said that her mother did not prepare the food? But, um, I'm not trying to point fingers, guys. I'm just sharing a story and uh, when I read about that, I was just like, okay, someone is lying. Who is it? You know, who 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 is not telling the truth here? Yeah. Clearly, the mother said that she had prepared food, which she went to go deliver. That's why she left Avihe alone. Um, is it Avihe lying? 
she lied and said her mother did not prepare the food while the mother did why would she lie is the aunt lying when she's saying that um the food was i mean she called avihe and avihe said her mother did not prepare the food someone is lying who is lying i don't know did the police follow up on this i don't know did they pick it up i don't know this is just something that i picked up and i'm not pointing fingers by no means whatsoever it could even be the newspaper that lied like you know the source that said that the mother said she went to go deliver food and that's why she left avi here home that could be the person that's lying you know i don't think it's the aunt because also the aunt herself with her own mouth i can insert a video did say that she called avi here and the last conversation they had was basically her asking if Abby had del- uh, if the mother was home so that she can come pick up her food but then Abby had responded saying that the mother wasn't at home that's a video that the person is saying themselves that, that the aunt is saying themselves so someone is lying maybe the newspaper maybe the aunt maybe Abby hey I don't know who but someone lied around uh, half past one I was coming from church and uh, my sister, the mother to the deceased, uh, was supposed to cook for me so that uh, I can pick up the food after church. So I called them when I was on my way home and uh, the first time uh, nobody answered and the second time Avihe, the deceased, answered the phone. And then I asked her whether I must make a turn to pick up, uh, whether they prepare uh, something for us. But she said, no, mom is not here, and uh, she did not prepare anything. So from there, I proceeded to my home state, and then in the afternoon, uh, like around uh, 7 o'clock, my sister called me just to find out whether, since I was the last person who spoke to Abihe, maybe I came to pick her up as I used to do all the time. But I managed to tell her that no, I did not pick her up. But she took it as a joke at the first time and then lately after i confirmed several times that i did not pick her up so uh she uh believed and then uh, we started to communicate to the rest of the family and to go around from house to house just to uh search for her but uh, the search was in vain we reported the case to to the police but the police said it's only after 24 hours that you can open a case and uh, early in the morning on Monday morning, uh, the case was opened. That's all I know. If you like, just from what I read, someone lied. Not pointing fingers. We're not about to do that here. We're just reporting facts. Not reporting, but sharing the facts that we have read about. My sources are linked down below in the video. I just played it for you. Um, basically, the word was out now. Everybody was looking for her on social media, posting everywhere, sharing to see if anybody had seen the hair. On Tuesday, the 28th of August, there was a man who was basically walking from Katutura going to Komastal, and then there's this riverbed in Stanfas. So it's a location between Katutura and Komas and Komasta. It's the location where Katutura and Komasta meet. So this man was working early in the morning from that location now going to the other location. From Katutura going to Komasta at Stanfas. I don't know if that is a good enough explanation. But this man was working there and then he comes across. This part is very you can skip this part if you really don't want to watch this part um if viewers discretion is advised please um if you know, if you feel uncomfortable with watching this part please just skip through but the man was working when he finds a body different body parts and he decided to just run and go call someone for help when they came they called the police and they basically found avihe's body her body was mutilated into pieces and it was just out there it was not in a bag or a container or anything it was just there on the ground like that it also looked as though her
body was boiled and a few of her body parts were missing um i do not want to get into too much detail so that's basically just how much i can say if you guys want to read more about like what was actually missing i'll leave this uh, that article in the description box as well and you guys can go read that for yourself if you guys in the future want me to actually include this kind of details please just let me know and i will do that but for the first video i felt like it's just a little bit sensitive for me to just throw it out there for you guys but let me know if you guys actually want to hear more about that but yeah um that's basically just how much i can add on for now but that's what i feel comfortable with saying okay so her body was mutilated into pieces and it looked as if it was boiled so the place at which avihe's body was found it's very open like it, at the time you know, now it has rained so back in 2018 it was very dry there was no rain so the area was very dry the trees were pretty spaced out i can insert a picture as well and it just it was clear to the police that whoever did this they didn't go do it there they must have done it somewhere else and then came to drop her body there and it was also um the other thing to add on to that was that whoever did that didn't leave like a bag a container like they didn't leave anything that they used to carry the part they it was evident that obviously the crime was not committed they however whatever they used to carry the body parts they were was just wasn't left there either so this kind of made the police case pretty hard you know to solve and also because it's very scarce like it's very the trees are very like far from each other and they're not close to each other it was just like there's no way somebody could have done something like this here so this must have been somebody that did this somewhere else and then basically came to dump the body parts there so basically the police then um called Avehe's family so that they could identify the body parts and the family went to the mortuary and they went to go identify the body parts as those of Avehe. This news was obviously devastating to Avehe's family. It was devastating to the whole nation entirely basically like it was like a whole thing on social media people were like posting and people were really you know uh, um saddened by the news everywhere including even people from prison basically like prisoners people that have been convicted of crimes and are in prison were devastated by this news so you can basically imagine how many people were devastated by this news including obviously Avehe's family even her classmates her school um, teacher like everyone was basically um, devastated in it was like a whole thing on social on on on, on the internet in the newspapers in, in the news it was basically clear to the police that whoever had whoever did this must have been somebody that was close to Avihe because of basically the fact that when she went missing like there wasn't like how can I say this it wasn't like nobody had like a struggle in the street or there were no neighbors that were reporting they had seen anything that seemed like like a struggle or anything of the ordinary so whoever did this to Avehe basically the police thought was someone that actually knew her not Avehe Avihe whoever did this to Avihe was somebody that actually knew her and not just like a random stranger because also just from the way Avihe is described there's no way she would have just gotten into any random stranger's car so the first person that was not the first person but one of the people that were questioned about her disappearance was her, her her taxi driver basically the person that drives her to school in the morning this person was questioned about her disappearance and 
basically that concluded to nothing because this person was released a few hours later after they have been questioned which meant like the police didn't suspect or you know they might have suspected but you know they didn't get anything to suggest that he is responsible so also a few days later on social media there was a post that was circulating on social media that was suggesting that his mother had been the one responsible for this which can you imagine if you are the one in her situation where your daughter has just been murdered brutally and somebody is posting a post on social media claiming that apparently you got paid by a chinese person and that's who you sold your kids to and that you had been arrested and you are in police custody like which was all a lie like none of that was true she was not arrested okay um, not including the not not <laughs> not to say that she was not paid by a chinese lady or whatever i don't know that but the fact that she was arrested by the police uh, in relation to that was a lie the police came out to say that is not true that she had not been arrested whatsoever so um the police also just urged the public to stop going on social media spreading lies and rumors as this would jeopardize their case because of the way in which Aliha's body was found it was believed that um it could have something to do with the english witchcraft uh, um, you know, she had error, it will be omiti, you know, shwambo, omuti, I'm guessing, but witchcraft basically, um, the police, not the police, but like the public and even maybe some of the police officers did believe that um, the way in which her body was mutilated and the fact that some of her body parts were missing, um, this might have something to do with witchcraft as well, and so some politicians or like political party leaders would come out to talk about how uh, um, people that deal with witchcraft have to be you know dealt with um, by the government as well as you know such things are happening um, yeah so the public obviously did also think it might have something to do with witchcraft Okay guys, I'm quickly going to do my mascara and my lipstick off camera Then I'll be back to finish the story that we started Okay guys, I'm back I'm definitely not gonna try doing this while doing my makeup again Because my focus, like I could not focus Like, I don't know, I feel like it was just hard to do my makeup while trying to tell the story So for the next video, we won't be doing our makeup while trying to tell the story We'll just be telling the story so anyways on the 8th of september abihe was put to rest at the pioneer park cemetery there were a lot of people in attendance including the public um the prime minister the first lady the former president a lot of leaders were there and they also offered a lot of help to the family with um, help such as just you know burial services and food for the people that attended the burial you know they were helping and honestly speaking to think that today we are still living in this world and whoever did this is still not held liable four years later like this person is still out there on the street so the information that the police has put out there is that whoever did this might is definitely somebody that close that is close to the victim. So if you guys know any information, there's still a hundred thousand dollar out there that you can get if you just went to the police and you gave the police the information that they need to put whoever is responsible for this behind bars. If you are the one that's responsible for this and you are watching this video, do the best to do the right thing and hand yourself 
over honestly speaking nobody deserves what that little girl went through her family definitely does not deserve going through what they are going through still four years later no answers i can imagine what i would be thinking or like how i would be feeling if this was my child so if you have any information regarding this case please visit the nearest police station and give them the information that you have so that we can put whoever is responsible for this crime behind us if you guys enjoyed this video please do not forget to like comment share and subscribe turn on the bell notification so you get notified every single time i post a new video and i will see you guys in the next video bye